Photographing live fast action sports can be quite tricky, but with a couple of these techniques and tools that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how you can get the job done. Welcome to another miscellaneous Monday and the other day I took a trip to my local football team, sorry, soccer team, and I I took along with me my crop sensor camera, my 7D. I've had this for years now. In fact, this is my well, the camera that I've had with me the longest anyway. This is been through some a lot of jobs and a lot of scenarios. I love this camera, but it's not full frame, but I'll get to that in a minute. And my 70 to 200 Sigma 2.8. And what I did was I went to, basically, I went to my local football team, Bromsgrove Sporting. Now, to put this into context, for those of you that have a basic knowledge of football, you probably see Man United, your Chelsea, your Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City's on the, on the telly all the time. Bromsgrove Sporting are in the 11th tier. Not the first up there with the big boys, 11th. So that is, and amongst football fans, the proper and only way to watch football. And the good thing is about when you go and watch the football uh, at that level is you can go all the way around the pitch. It's all standing so anybody can go anywhere. You can get right up close to the action. You can give the linesman a mouthful if you want. And it's a real what we call grassroots level football club and it's perfect for photography so I would after this video I would urge anyone who's interested in in photography to go down to their local sports team rugby football if you're over in the states it could be baseball basketball American football whatever and and take your camera and see what you can get with this technique now there's a lot of snobbery about what I'm going to talk about I choose to shoot. I choose. I chose to shoot in an automatic mode, semi-automatic anyway. So I changed the camera to shutter priority. Now on a Canon, it's called TV. Now if anyone can tell me why it's called TV, I don't know. But change it to shutter priority. Now the reason I did that was because usually I'd shoot in manual, and I can't be bothered fiddling around with all the. Uh, the components trying to get the exposure correct if the action is moving around me very very quickly so what I chose to do shooting in a semi-automatic mode where the shutter speed remained constant now I chose one one thousandth of a second I chose that because I knew or I know that I want to be able to freeze the action I don't want any blurred artistic fine art photographs that's not what this is about I wanted to get good old-fashioned journalist style photographs where the action is completely frozen in time. So another thing I chose to do, again, this is something that I think photographers have to just deal with and get over themselves. I chose to shoot on ORSO ISO. Now, if I'd have set it to ISO 100, then the photos would have come back underexposed because the maximum aperture on, on this lens it's only 2.8 all the way through. So 2.8, a thousandth of a second ISO 100 would be very dark. And if I chose, let's say, an, an ISO of somewhere on the other side of the scale, 6400, just to be safe and make sure everything's perfectly exposed, then I might notice that a lot of my photos are grainy. So what I did was I shot at auto ISO, and I knew that on a winter's day, it's the first couple of days of April here in the UK and it's still very light, it's very blue and it's not it's not great light, especially on this day. That what I did was I, I knew that I, the ISO would bring me at around 800, 1000, 1250, 1600, something like that. So shooting at shutter priority, maintain a shutter speed so every photo I took I knew would be perfectly exposed. Now sometimes you know better than the camera. Yeah, we all know better than the camera sometimes. Let's say when we're shooting in snow. But sometimes, and I say this loosely, a lot of the time, the camera knows better than you. It can calculate light a lot quicker than you can. So why not just let the camera do the hard work? That's what I'm thinking. Instead of being a snob about it and doing it manually and missing a shot, it's a little bit of grain. It's just a little tiny bit of grain if you, if you get a shot at ISO 2000. And... The good thing is, again, slightly off piste here, but the 7D is a crop sensor with a 70 to 200. The maths isn't very good, but 1.6 times 200, that would be at the long end, 
300 and 100 be 160 so 320 320 this would be at the longest end 320 mil so it's got a long reach on it now obviously with crop sensor bodies you've got that 1.6 crop factor so that's why i didn't take my six my 60 and also this has got a faster frames per second or shots per second rate as well. So what I did when I when there was, let's say, a penalty or a free kick or something that I knew action was about to happen, I'd take about a dozen photos of each moment. When I got back, I found that I had about 250 photos to sort through. So let me just jump onto the laptop and show you a couple of, a couple of photos that I did to give you an example. Right, okay, so let's choose. This is probably my favorite photo that I took all day. Now, I was right behind the goal, and there's the big number 10, Richie Gregory. He just bent a shot right round everyone in this tiny little gap into the top corner, and I was stood in the right place at the right time to photograph it. So I took that, I took, I don't know, probably 10 photos of that ball's journey into the net, decided this was the best, and I'm really happy with it. So obviously, I know that it's going to be one thousandth of a second. I also know that it's going to be um, 2.8 because the lens will prioritize the um, aperture. And oh, it is actually at 3.2. And this was actually right down to ISO 200, which I'm really pleased with. So again, if I'd have set it to ISO 100 all day, then it probably wouldn't have been far off. But I didn't want to take that gamble. So that's, and if I just go, you know, left and right down some of these, it's ISO 250, ISO 160, 125. So they're all at the lower end, actually. I th actually, I didn't even look at the ISO values. I thought they would have been quite high. 640, 800. So shooting down towards the other end of the ground, there was a lot of dark, actually, because the, the main stand, I guess, was very dark. It was shielded from the sunlight. So obviously the camera, that's ISO 1000. So down one end of the ground, I could use ISO 100. But again, let the camera do the thinking for you is, is, uh, is my message to you. Don't worry so much about trying to get it right yourself. And the more that you use the camera on these auto modes, these semi-automatic modes, the more that you'll understand the way that the camera works in different lighting situations. So get down your local sports team. Maybe you've got a son or daughter that's, in, uh, that's into this sort of thing. Um, photograph them when they're playing football or rugby or whatever it is. Um, like I said, get the long lens out. 70 to 200 is, is my go-to lens for sports. I've never shot sports before and now I'm really interested to shoot some more. I find it a really fun challenge and it's something a lot different. So anyway, that's all for now for today's Miscellaneous Monday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I shall see you on the next video. So like, comment, subscribe and tell your friends, folks. La, 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 la.